The year is 2005, a time when flip phones were all the rage, dial-up internet was slowly being replaced, and MP3 players were becoming a must-have gadget. Back then, the world was a bust with the release of Xbox 360, a gaming marvel promising endless adventures in high definition. Movies like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Star Wars Episode III, Revenge of the Sith, has fans queuing up for midnight premieres, eager for their magical and galactic fix. While gaming enthusiasts were diving into the immersive worlds of World of Warcraft and Call of Duty 2, kids were grooving into the infectious tunes of one of Cookie Jar's most faithful shows, The Doodle Bobs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this trio of colorful, music-loving characters, Dee Dee, Rooney, and Mo, brought joy and catchy tunes wherever they went. Their vibrant personalities and toe-tapping songs captured the hearts of young viewers, inspiring laughter and imagination in every episode. With their colorful outfits and undeniable chemistry, the Doodle Bops turned ordinary moments into extraordinary adventures, teaching powerful lessons about friendship, creativity, and the power of music. But as time went on, the once popular show seemed to fade from the spotlight, leaving fans nostalgic for those fun-filled musical escapades. This makes you wonder, what happened? Sadie, come on, we gotta open up. Welcome to Endrick Studios Toon Tales, a series of videos that will narrate the once good cartoons of the time, seen no more today. In this premiere episode, we will embark on a journey back to the colorful and melodic world of a beloved series, The Doodle Bobs. This show greets us to a delightful trio who once filled our screens with infectious energy and catchy tunes. With their zany melodies and unforgettable adventures, they've captivated audiences worldwide. So, grab some popcorn, get your most comfy clothes, and fasten your seatbelts. We're gonna take a bus ride all the way to 2005. Now it's worth mentioning that these musicians were part of the domain of Canadian company Cookie Jar, now labeled as Wild Brain. Under the wing of Disney's preschooler channel back then, named Playhouse Disney, now named as Disney Junior, this show was more than just a cartoon. It was a live-action musical comedy that captivated kids and adults all together. With Lisa Lennox as Dee Dee Doodle, Chad McNamara as Rooney Doodle, and Jonathan Wexler as Mo Doodle, the show has been given a predictable storyline, and each episode consisted of some troubles which they had to resolve. Three seasons is a good amount for anyone. 65 episodes in total? <laughs> wow, that's a good starting number. Truth be told, these guys were the best candidate for a proper reboot slash revival, but the company decided to give a certain bold Brad more screen time on their catalog, but hey, who are we to blame? Oh 
you got to be fucking with me! From April 11th, 2005 to November 17th, 2007, the show had a fair lifespan. A total of two years, seven months, and six days. And now in 2024, the show is almost 20 years old. Which, by any means, <laughs> go them. Fun fact, the way I knew about the show was this. I had this memory inside my brain where I heard something like Kali flowers inside my head. The memory was much of a stop for many years, until one Discord friend of mine was having Dee Dee Doodle as their profile picture. Not only did I recognize her out of the blue back then, but I also got to recover that weird memory I just mentioned. Never knew you were that powerful long term memory. <laughs> Going with their personalities. Dee Dee is the one in purple slash pink, often upbeat and happy. She can be bossy at times as seen in Queen for a Dee Dee. Rooney is the one in blue. He's like the voice of reason of the free and can invent things. So he's like the wise one of the free. Last but not least, Mo is the one in yellow slash orange. He's the youngest of them all, as seen in Grow Mo, and he's often seen as a mischievous one of the free, often making the scenarios a tad silly, which I kind of enjoy from him. Now, to be fair, this show is one hell of an adventure. It has bright colors, fun songs, and silly characters, which obviously are fitting criteria for a hellish YouTube Kids video. But comparing the most run-of-the-mill YouTube Kids videos with this, I think this show is way cooler than all that horrendous stuff. Okay, I guess that's enough talk for an introduction. Let's just head over to the formula that makes each episode good, for the most part. Okay, so here's where we lay down the basis of how an episode of the Doodle Bops is made. Just for reference, I'll take the episodes Cauliflower Power from Season 1 and The Bad Day from Season 3, which, by the way, are some of my favorite episodes from the show. Right off the bat, we start the episode with a song that greets the main characters, which once done, we get to be introduced to Dee Dee, Rooney, and... Yep, this is the first main section of any episode, which I like to call... Where's Mo? Where's Mo? Where's Mo? Thank you, kids. In this section of the episode, Dee Dee and Rooney try to find Mo within the clubhouse, which they succeed not long after. I don't know you, but I'm starting to love Mo more than Dee Dee or even Rooney. So if I had to love one of them to no end, I'd go with Rooney. I mean, come on, he's such a hunk. Where, where was I? Oh, right. With Mo finally found, the three of them are finally introduced, with much missing the band's name. Do you want to know how many times has he said their band's name wrong? Well, you'll have to find out on your own, I'm not even going to spoil it for you. After that, they then get to the next important section of the episode, which is the deal about Pledge, which is one of the catchiest songs I've ever heard. Heck, I can even say the Pledge without even hearing the lyrics. It's that catchy. The pledge didn't change a lot as seasons gone by. In season 1, they just go with saying the pledge. In season 2, Rooney asks the viewers if they know the pledge, which he later affirms in season 3. Dee Dee, on that note, engages us to say the pledge with them by season 2 onwards, with Mo counting to 4 so that we all get ready. On season 3, after saying their names, then going to some random skits of them before ending the pledge song all together. Yeah, it's a good pledge. A good one to never forget. The pledge is over. And now what? Jasmine, or Mass in season 2 onwards, gets into the clubhouse and shares an experience of hers, which is later translated into a song she sings. In The Bad Day, for example, she sings a song about counting to 10. The song made by her will be later used near the end of the episode, so keep that in the back of your mind. Once done, the Doodle Bops try to apply her song into action with certain situations that tackle down the purpose of the song. With the issue solved, 
they didn't go inside to have some fun. Oh, by the way, did you know that Mo is a rope pulling extraordinaire? You know the kind of friend that does anything by mere instinct? Like that time you told that friend not to break your most favorite maze and they break it anyway? Well, this is one quirk that Mo has. A red velvety rope falls from a bop, and Mo, him he loves ropes, wants to pull it. Despite everyone telling him not to pull it, I guess you can see what happens once he pulls the rope. A bucket of water falls on him and gets him all wet. <laughs> I mean, come on Mo, you're such a goofball. <laughs> <laughs> I really should get that fixed. Now that they are outside, they get into some hijinks that do relate with the adventure. And eventually, we get to be introduced to Boss Driver Bob. Who's the guy who takes the Doodle Bobs to the concert? By the way, I just love how the song Get On The Bus has been improving from one season to another. At certain times, they do certain actuations rather than singing the song, which is perfect for diversifying on this section. Once we get into the concert, we get to see a montage of the kids getting ready to see them there. And man, are they ready! The concert's the great place to solve the main problems they had in certain episodes. But, either way, the Doodle Bops sing a concert version of the song that was made by either Mass or Jasmine back then. I actually enjoy this version of the songs than the ones sung by her. Eventually, the song ends and the concert is over. Before wrapping the episode up, we get to see a small section where Dee Dee tells a joke to Munch. Which ends up with him not getting the joke at all. I guess you could say that's cat's a boomer. With that done, a song is played to finish the episode. The credits roll, and the episode comes to an end. Repeat this formula for three seasons, and you've got yourself a nostalgic hit. After the last episode of the original series has come to an end, there was not much we could do other than watch another show until they eventually come back. And come back they did. In December 2009, the Cookie Jar Company announced they would co-produce a new series for the Doodle Bops with the German studio Optics Entertainment and the Argentinian studio Illusion Studios. All of this being previously greenlit by CBC. On February 28, 2010, the Doodle Bops Rock and Road Show aired for the first time on Kids CBC as well as CBS's Saturday Morning Blog, which was only seen in the U.S. Hey, Doodle Dude! It's time for the show! Send a message to the Doodle Bops Rock and Road Show! Where's Mo? Where's Mo? Mo, where'd you go? It's time for the show. Ta-da! Here I am. Come on, Mo. We gotta go. It's time for the show. And you know, oh. Oh. We're all sing about the Judo Bop Rock and Roll Show. All together, we're the Judo Bop. This spin-off, while maintaining the formula that initiated the franchise in the first place, also brings new ideas to the table. The original show was made in an episodic manner, likewise, that rule of thumb can be seen in this version of the show. The formula was altered moderately, so to speak. In each episode of this spin-off, a new character, in that case the male snail, delivers the Doodle Box a DVD showing a video of a live-action child with a situation similar to the situation the Doodle Bops are facing in each episode. The child is turned into an animated character, and said child is considered a doodle for a day for the episode. 
Oh, and speaking of changes, the section where they tell Mo not to pull the rope is now moved to the end of each episode, focusing on Mo getting to many hijinks of his own. Each adventure of this iteration of the Doodlebox consists of a roughly 23 minute episode, which is split into two different adventures. A similar formula that was previously made by an undersea creature that lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants! And according to this playlist, given there's 25 episodes, that means that this spin-off has a total of 50 episodes. If we were to split the entirety of the show into three seasons, just like the original series, one of them would have 16 episodes, while the other two would have 17 episodes just to fill in the gaps. Which isn't much, but hey, it's honest work. All of the characters that were seen in the original show do not make a return here. And there's new songs made specifically for this spin-off. Despite the wiki stating that songs from the 2005 series can be heard in some episodes. The most notable of which is the second version of Get On The Bus. But here's the main question to set up the feedback. Did I like this spin-off? I'd say yes. If the original show was great, so was the spin-off. The actors in the original show now aren't here as voice actors for their 2D counterparts, a similar predicament that we will see years later with Teen Titans Go. But we don't talk about that fetchy show here now, do we? The designs made for each one of them is way adorable, so much so, I wish I had them as plush toys. And can we just appreciate the fact that each idea for each episode is great? Like, you don't come as far-fetched, but at the very least, they keep the show fresh at best. It didn't get me bored, and I was glad I got to see more from this and other random memories that were somewhat obsolete inside my brain. But not everything can last forever, now can it? Now, not everything lasts forever, and there are many clear signs of this happening. The actors of the show are no longer seen anywhere else, footage of their tour is somewhat considered lost to media, and the overall franchise didn't get a renewal ever since the 2010s. We could potentially blame a bald brat for making all of this happen, but unlike La Lootsie, where we had not much to salvage, the Doodlebox has a wide variety of things that were salvaged thanks to the community. Books from the series are up on the Internet Archive, as well as an ISO backup of their Clubhouse adventures. The entirety of the Doodlebox series is up on Wildbrain's YouTube channel for them, with a fan account named Mo Doodle to compile information about the show. Likewise, all the episodes from the Rockin' Red show are up as well, which are fantastic moves for not only the company, but for the fans as well. The Doodlebots were a massive hit, and they knew it. Oh, by the way, I even want to promote something here. Remember that that website where you can talk with pretty much any character, character.ai? Well, I made character AI versions of Didi, Rooney, and Mo. I could possibly add more Doodlebots characters like Mudge, the male snail, Mask, Jasmine, or even Jumping Judy. Perhaps even add Buzz Doodlebot there, but Hey, I'll just let you guys decide. It's evident that the impact of this colorful trio was significant and enduring. Their presence on platforms like Wild Brain's YouTube channel allows new generations to experience the joy and magic that captivated audiences years ago. Despite challenges and changes over the years, the fact that all of this has been salvaged and preserved is a testament to the enduring love fans hold for the Doodlebops. Their enthusiastic response and efforts to keep the memory of the show alive speaks volumes about its status as a beloved classic that continues to resonate with audiences even years after its original run. Like, there are even websites dedicated to them, as well as a possible lore for them. I never knew all that existed as well. Oh, and remember that teaser I made for a potentially new Friday Night Funkin' mod that I'll be making? Well, the wait is over. In its version 1.0, Funkin' with the Doodlebops is available on Game Banana and Game Jolt for everyone to play. Rest assured, for 20 years of this show, 
It is absolutely crazy how far has this come to exist. Cheers to all of the people who worked on the show. You've been a wonderful team who made one of the most nostalgic shows that, despite not being Caillou in terms of popularity, has made a grandiose impact on not only me, but on many people as well. The links to each one of the resources that were salvaged, as well as the channels that contributed to make this video possible, are in the description below. With that said, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Until then, grab your remote and see you in the next episode of Say With Me Everybody, Andrew Studios, Tone Tales! I should probably start making Rule 34 art of the Doodle Bops. That should probably give me more popularity. <laughs> You've heard nothing! <laughs>